All right, friends, it's Dr. Alsop here again, and we have made it to the distalmost region of the lower limb in our discussion of the joints. The majority of our focus is going to be on the talocrural joint, uh, which basically means between the talus and uh, the, cr the crus, which is the leg, and that is going to be your true ankle joint, and we'll spend some time there. And then I do want to talk about a few of the intertarsal joints in the foot region, so between some of the tarsal bones, that play a role in terms of inversion and eversion, um, which are actions that occur uh, between uh, with these joints that really you very rarely will have um, some of the actions of the ankle joint without some of the actions of some of those intertarsal joints. So plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, inversion, and eversion, they very often happen in unison. So we want to understand which joints are going to uh, play a role there. But before we move into that true talocrural or ankle joint, I do want to note some fibrous joints that are very closely associated with this region. And so if you remember back in our discussion of the forearm region with the radius and the ulna, we had an interosseous membrane between the shafts of those bones. We have the same thing here between the tibia and the fibula. So the interosseous membrane is going to be located between the tibia and the fibula shafts, and this is a fibrous joint. But if you look a little bit more distally down, so not between the tibia and fibula and the, the talus, but you can see that there is going to be a connection, an inferior connection between the tibia and the fibula. You also had a superior one, which we don't have um, an image of right here. But this inferior tibiofibular joint, which you can see right here, is also an example of a syndesmosis or a fibrous joint. So not only do you have the interosseous membrane, but also this inferior tibiofibular joint, which is also a syndesmosis fibrous joint. So it's another one of those examples, rare examples, where we're talking about a specific uh, joint that is not a synovial joint. Now, we will see a few ligaments that are very closely related to some of the ligaments of the talocrural joint. Um, but they are specifically going to be capsular ligaments, or excuse me, um, ligaments, because they're not capsular, because they're not synovial, but ligaments very closely associated with this fibrous joint. And this we bring up here because it is essential for the stability of the ankle joint. You can have injuries to this particular joint that will affect the true ankle joint or the talocrural joint. So I wanted to point out uh, one of these rare examples of where you do have um, some fibrous joints associated with this region in addition to the synovial joints down here. Okay, so let's focus on the true ankle joint or the talocrural joint. Like we said, this is going to be between the distal fibula and the distal tibia, which you can see this is tibia here. Um, and the talus, which is a little bit more difficult to see in this particular image because it is almost completely occluded by the ligaments in this region that are protecting it. But the talus is going to be right about here-ish, here and that is going to be the tarsal portion of the ankle joint. So the talus here. All right, so we know we're looking at a medial view here for a few reasons. First of all, Clearly you can see the tibia and you can see the medial malleolus, which is fairly expansive here. The medial malleolus is the distalmost portion of the tibia and so obviously we're going to be on the medial side. You can also see over here that the, lon the medial longitudinal arch, which is uh, the, the higher of the longitudinal arches, um, you can see that here as well. So another indication that you're looking at the medial view. Okay. Now, in terms of the ligaments in this region, you are going to have a fairly expansive um, set of collateral ligaments on the medial side, which are referred to as either the medial, but very often you hear these referred to as the deltoid ligaments. This is a complex of four different parts of, a, of this ligament that all have an attachment on this medial malleolus here. 
And not only do they have an attachment on the medial malleolus, but the fibers of these ligaments kind of intertwine to really form a solid uh, force on this medial side. And so this partic these particular ligaments play a role in terms of joint stabilization during eversion. Now, eversion occurs in some of those intertarsal joints, um, but it is, like we said, very commonly, uh, very rarely do you have actions at the ankle joint without also having actions in the intertarsal joints. So eversion, if you think about the sole of your foot moving more laterally, okay? So eversion is moving more laterally, whereas inversion of the foot is going to have the sole of the foot moving more medially. So if you do that particular action yourself, you see that you are likely able to invert your foot to a, with a higher range of motion than you are with eversion. Eversion, you can't do quite as much. And that has a lot to do with the fact that these medial or deltoid ligaments are considerably stronger than their lateral counterparts on the other side. So. They play a big role in terms of, uh, of checking those particular motions. Now, when we're talking about the ankle joint, kind of as an aside, and this is something that comes up in the learning objectives, and not particularly, um, you're not going to really see these, uh, see these actions on a practical, but just in terms of the, the terminology plantar flexion and dorsiflexion, of the ankle joint because the ankle joint is a true hinge joint so flexion extension but instead of calling it flexion extension we call it plantar flexion and dorsiflexion and plantar flexion is going if you think about pointing your toes down if you think about a ballerina standing on their toes uh, that they are plantar flexing whereas dorsiflexion is going to have your toes facing up or superiorly or if you can think about kind of digging your heels in, um, that's going to be dorsiflexion. So uh, ankle joint's going to be a true hinge joint, and then you're going to have some intertarsal joints that allow for inversion and eversion, and we'll look at those in a second. And we know we're looking at a medial view here. All of these are going to be part of that medial or deltoid ligament, which are considerably stronger than the counterparts on the lateral side. Now we know, let's figure out why we know we're looking at a lateral view here in terms of the ankle. And one of the first things that I note is this fairly thin fibular shaft, which is going to be significantly smaller than what you see over here in terms of the tibia. So we know that fibula is always lateral, so we have this fibula facing more in this view, so we know we're looking at a lateral view. Additionally, you can see the lateral malleolus, which is of the fibula. Uh, so, and that's where a lot of these lateral ligaments are going to, or actually all the lateral ligaments are going to attach for the ankle joint. Now, before we move into those specific lateral ligaments that we can see in this image, I do want to point out um, one ligament that you can see here in yellow, and this is the anterior tibiofibular. So meaning that it's attaching the tibia and the fibula, so you know it is likely a, a ligament that's playing a role in that inferior tibiofibular joint. So you can see how closely associated this joint is and these ligaments to the, the joint, the true ankle joint, which is going to be between the, the tibia, excuse me, the tibia, the fibula, and the talus right here. Okay, so this is going to be uh, playing a role of stability of this particular joint, not the ankle joint, but these lateral ligaments are. And so let's talk about those. So this first one in orange is your ATF ligament or your anterior talofibular. So this means that this is going to connect the talo, meaning talus, so connecting the talus here, and the fibula specifically to the lateral malleolus. This, like I said, is often referred to as the ATF ligament. This is your most commonly injured uh, ligament associated with the ankle joint. So this will come up again in uh, various clinical lectures, um, but this is where you can locate that. From this lateral view, you can also see the calcaneofibular ligament in blue here. 
So this is that calcaneo fibular. It is attaching the calcaneus to the lateral malleolus here as well. And these particular ligaments, and we'll see the third ligament in a moment, um, these particular ligaments are all going to have an attachment on the lateral malleolus, but they don't interweave as well together. And so these are often referred to as considerably uh, weaker than ligaments than what you have on the medial side or with the deltoid ligaments. Okay, now, now we're looking at a posterior view here. You can see the calcaneal tendon here, or your Achilles tendon. So calcaneal tendon is the correct anatomical term. Um, you can see the calcaneofibular ligament again. So this is the lateral malleolus right here. And you can see back here the posterior talofibular ligament, which is going to be shaded here in purple. So this is between uh, the talus, which is almost completely occluded from view, and the lateral malleolus as well. So that's part of those lateral ligaments. So if we kind of go back, and I'll come back to this, this particular ligament in a moment that's shaded in green because it's not part of the, the ankle joint. But you can see that we have three lateral ligaments, the anterior talofibular, the calcaneofibular, which you can see here in this image as well, as well as the posterior talofibular. So there's three different lateral ligaments, and we do have you know and need to be able to identify the three ligaments. So why would we have you know these three ligaments and not the four parts of the deltoid ligament? Why do you think that could be? Well, two things. It's a lot easier to identify these ligaments than try to tell the four deltoid ligaments apart, but also because these ligaments are more likely to be injured than the, on the medial side. So that's why we have you identify the three lateral ligaments. Now I said that I would return to this particular ligament that is shaded in green here. This, like I said, is not protecting the true talocrural or ankle joint. This is going to be playing a role in terms of that inferior tibiofibular joint. So this is the posterior tibiofibular, and as its name would suggest, it's going to connect the tibia to the fibula. It is not connecting to the talus, which would be part of that true ankle joint. So part of that inferior tibiofibular joint that we keep bringing up, um, that is going to be closely associated with the ankle joint, but not the true ankle joint. Okay. Okay, like I said, I, pro I promised that we would talk about a few joints that are going to play a role in terms of inversion and eversion. Uh, like I said again, the inversion, think about the sole heading medially, sole of the foot, excuse me, heading medially. Eversion is going to be the sole of the foot heading uh, laterally. And some of those ligaments associated with the ankle joint will help play a role in terms of checking those motions. But what's actually um, going to allow these motions to occur are some of the intertarsal joints. And the first one we're going to talk about is the subtalar. And what we are specifically going to have you ID is what's referred to as the anatomical subtalar joint. Okay? And this is going to be the articulation or the joint between the talus, which is right here, is always the more superior of your tarsal bones, and the calcaneus. And your calcaneus is your heel bone, and it's the largest of your tarsal bones. So the anatomic subtalar joint is going to be that articulation between these two bones. And like I said, this particular joint will play a role in terms of allowing inversion and eversion to occur. There is what's referred to as a clinical subtalar joint. This particular terminology is used by orthopedic surgeons. Um, this is going to be between this anatomic subtalar joint as well as the talocalcaneonavicular joint. So kind of these two joints and where you have the articulation with the navicular, which you can see right here. We are not going to have you ID that. I want you to focus on the anatomic subtalar and just realize that you there is a often referred to clinical subtalar joint, but 
their actions, the actions that occur at these joints are the same. So functionally, they are very similar in terms of allowing inversion and eversion to happen. But this is that anatomic subtalar joint between the talus and the calcaneus, and that's what we want you to focus on and be able to ID. Now there are um, there is another set of joints that we want you to be aware of, which is referred to as the transverse tarsal joint, which is basically a compound or a combined joint. And this is going to be between um, the calcaneus and the cuboid. So this is the cuboid here. This is the calcaneus or your heel bone here. This is the talus. Like we said, we're looking at a superior view, so this is obviously going to be the more superior one here. And the navicular right here. So once again, just to kind of get our bearings in terms of uh, those tarsal bones, because this will help you ID where this joint is, here is your talus. Here is the large calcaneus, which is underneath the talus, or deep to or inferior to the talus. Here is your cuboid. The cuboid is going to be lateral. And here is your navicular. You can see the fairly large navicular. The navicular will be on the medial side, which is associated with your first digit here. Here's your first digit or your big toe. Here is your fifth digit or your little toe. Okay, so this transverse tarsal joint, like I said, is a compound joint, which is basically uh, the combination of the calcaneo cuboid and the tallo-calcaneo-navicular joint, specifically the tallo-navicular. So if we were to ask you to identify the transverse tarsal joint, you would basically be looking at this region right here. So between the talus, navicular, calcaneus, and cuboid region right here. And like I said um, previously, this is going to play a role in terms of allowing inversion and eversion to occur, similar to what we have with the subtalar. So that's a complex movement that is involving multiple joints, multiple intertarsal joints, to allow for that action to happen. And the reason that we talk about inversion and eversion so much with the talocoral or the ankle joint is that very rarely do you have um, plantar flexion and dorsiflexion occurring without also inversion and eversion. So they're very commonly discussed as one large complex of movements that occur in the ankle and foot region. Okay, so, I, so we will return to some of these ligaments and some of these joints in more detail, uh, particularly in some of the clinical lectures because lateral ankle sprains um, and strains are going to, to play a big role in something that's commonly uh, uh, discussed in a clinical setting. Uh, so that will we will return to that in more detail in subsequent sessions. As always, uh, review your osteology. Make sure that you can identify some of these larger tarsal bones that will help you in terms of being able, able to identify the joints in this region. And always feel free to reach out to, to me or any of my anatomy colleagues. We are always very happy to talk any joints and love talking osteology as well. So always feel free to reach out to us. Please have a good rest of your day.